Hello and thank you for stopping by for this week's video. Today we are going to talk about 3D printers and specifically three things that you need to know before you buy a 3D printer if you are a beginner or like in my case a total noob. So what we're looking at here is my 3D printer, an Elugu Mars 2 Pro. My wife was kind enough to buy it for my birthday and I've been printing on it for about three weeks to four weeks-ish. And what I want to share with you is what I've learned in that time. So the first thing is you order your printer from Amazon or wherever you order your resin and you get it home, you set it up and you think you're going to start printing. Nope, you're not. You need more stuff. You're going to need quite a bit of stuff. Let's go through some of that stuff. At the very minimum, you're going to need rubber gloves. You're going to need a respirator and you're going to need a lot of isopropyl alcohol to clean everything. Now the isopropyl alcohol that you can buy in the stores is 91%. That's the highest concentration. If you want to go higher, which some people recommend, you can go to 94% or 99%. Uh, it is available on Amazon, but it is quite a bit more expensive. So far, I've used the store-bought one from Walmart, and it's 91%, and it seems to be working fine, so I'm going to stick with that. I am going to include as many links to the items I use as is possible in the description below. I just want you to be aware that I am trying to become an Amazon affiliate, so any links that you click on that take you to Amazon if you purchase the product, a small amount of that purchase will be kicked back to the channel from Amazon. It's no extra cost to you. So please use the links if possible and make your purchases through them. I would really appreciate it. Okay, so we got some of the safety equipment away. You're obviously going to need some just plain paper towels, which you probably have at home. But what you probably don't have are some cloth towels. And these are a disposable kind of towel that will allow you to wipe down surfaces that you don't want to get scratched. These are the ones that I use and I'll provide a link below for you for that. Also, you're going to need a vat or something to dunk your miniature or your terrain or whatever you're printing into so that you can clean it. And that vat's usually going to have isopropyl alcohol in it. So this is the vat that I use and once again I'll have a link for you. I'll have a link for everything. Now while you're doing this cleaning or removing of the build plate to get your miniature off or whatever, you're going to need something that you can put these things down onto that are not going to damage the surface of your table and are not going to damage the items that you're putting onto it. So what I like to do is have a silicone mat on the surface of my desk right in front of the printer and then I can put the build plate right down on top of that and clean it or whatever I, I want to and I, I know it's a very easy surface to clean and it's soft and kind of spongy and it's not going to damage anything that I put on it. Now if I'm going to make a little bit of a mess maybe, I will use a large Tupperware. The largest Tupperware I can find and I'll put it on top of the silicone mat and then I'll do everything inside the Tupperware and that will really contain any resin from spilling anywhere. Then afterwards I can just take that uh, Tupperware out into the sun and just leave it there, let it cure and then just throw away the cured resin. Next up, you are going to need a funnel and a strainer, uh, particularly a silicone funnel and a, a metal strainer that's got a mesh in it. And what you're going to use that for is anytime you need to take your resin from the vat and pour it back into the bottle, you need to strain it so that no little bits of cured resin get into the bottle. So this is the one that I use. Now, in addition to that, and I'd say this is the final item that's really a must-have is you're going to need a curing station. You're going to need something that after you take your terrain or your miniature out that you can put into to cure that resin to make it safe. Now some people say you can put it in the sun but that's going to be really hit or miss and you're really going to have to experiment to do that. I found a fairly inexpensive uh, air quotes on the inexpensive curing station and I'll link that for you as well. So in my opinion, those are all the must-haves, the things that you really need to get before you get the printer delivered to your house. If you think there's more items, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Moving on to my second point of the three things that you need to know before you buy a 3D printer 
is you're going to need to have some technical expertise or be willing to learn how to do certain things. First, uh, I'm going to say that this printer is not my first one. The first one I got, which was the exact same thing, broke on the third day of using it. I contacted Elegoo and they sent me an email asking me to open the machine up, check certain parts, look for lights, if I had a multimeter to use a multimeter in certain areas. So needless to say, you need to have the confidence to do that or to learn how to do that. In addition, you may need to change the FEP film at the bottom of the vat. At some point, you may damage it. We're all beginners at this. We may do something and damage that piece of plastic, and then you're going to need to take that vat apart and replace the FEP film. You need to be comfortable in doing that, or watch videos and just learn how to do it. It's not difficult. Also, in terms of technical expertise, there are computer programs you're going to need to learn how to use. Um, the most common one, uh, and I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, is Shitubox. And that's the program you're going to use to add supports to your models, to resize them, to rotate them, to position them differently on the build plate. And you're going to need to know how to use that. You're going to have to learn how to use that either by watching videos or trial and error or whatever, but you're going to have to learn how to use it. In addition, if you want to print things that are larger than your build plate, you're going to have to learn another program that's going to teach you how to cut those pieces into smaller sections that fit on your build plate. So that's another set of software that you're going to have to learn how to use if you want to do that. The third and final thing that you really need to know is that you're going to have to be a bit of a problem solver. If you print something and it sticks inside the vat to the film, what are you going to do? How are you going to get it off? How are you going to remedy that situation so that it doesn't happen again? If your print sticks to the build plate, what are you going to do? How are you going to get it off? How are you going to remedy that so that it doesn't happen again? You're going to have failures to print. No doubt about it, especially when you start. My first print was the two uh, rook pieces, and they came out perfect. And I figured, well, here we go. I am a master 3D printer. I have successfully printed the test pieces with no difficulty. I then tried to get them off the build plate, and they wouldn't come off. I had to stop what I was doing and start researching and see how I was going to get these things off. I tried dental floss. I tried freezing the build plate. And in the end, I just had to take my little scraper and just carefully take a small hammer and just knock them off. Um, eventually I learned that printing things like that on an angle with supports is better than just printing them flat onto the build plate. It was just a learning process and I had to research it and solve the problem. Another problem you're probably gonna need to solve is a ventilation issue. My printer is sitting on my desk right there but what you can see is there's a window right behind the printer. There's a window to the left of the printer and the front door to my house is to the right of the printer. So when I start printing, I start opening doors and windows and I position a fan and start blowing air out the windows because even though I'm using a low odor resin, there is still a smell once it starts printing. So that's something that you're gonna have to see. Some people are very affected by the odor. Some people say they can't smell the odor at all. So that's just something that you're gonna have to deal with when the time comes. So there you have it. Those are the three things I feel a beginner needs to know before they decide to purchase that 3D printer. Um, in the end, I love the 3D printer. I um, use it almost every day now as I learn it and I make mistakes and then I fix my mistakes and I do research. So I would highly recommend it. Uh, am I going to use it to build terrain? No. No, I'm still doing my terrain by hand. I don't like the look of the 3D printed terrain. Um, that's just me. Uh, I am going to use it to print miniatures for specific projects or maybe small fiddly pieces that I can't really make well or maybe something small that's more complicated or complex that will save me some time and allow me to get my videos out faster. So um, in the end, I love the 3D printer. I highly recommend it. Um, I'm using the Elegoo Mars 2 Pro, but there's plenty of other good brands out there to choose from. Just do your research and choose what's best for you. Uh, and I appreciate you guys for uh, hanging around for the whole video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like the channel, share the video, leave a comment for sure. 
And if any of these products you think you could use, please use my links below to Amazon to purchase them. I would greatly appreciate it and it would help the channel immensely. Thanks guys and I'll catch you on the next one.